So now we have this surface. I don't think I want to sand this whole darn thing. Maybe we'll just sand this, this section here. Yeah, I'm going to tape this off. Let's measure in the middle here. 110, 110, 110, 106, 106, 110, 108, 110, 110, 104, so it's a little thinner over here to the right. So, you know, somewhere around 108 was our, remember that measurement. All right, so that was our corrected spot. I corrected that, and here's what we're working with to start, All right? Quite a bit nicer after our little minor correction. All right, so just keep that pencil in your brain and we're gonna do some sanding. Hopefully it'll completely screw it up. All right, so we've got this little, this little stick. This is the foam one, you know, the softer foam one. Uh, and so I'm gonna use the flat side with some 3M 2000 grit. And we're gonna test my skill set here. All right, so here's what we got. You can see I'm having some blending issues there. I don't know. I'll be interested to see how this how this turns out. So here's the difference. So Jason just sanded this section, and I sanded mine. So look at it. Almost looks like you know mine is much less uniform, but deeper. Right. So I have deeper scratches in there, and then his is just flat. I don't know, man. I don't know <laughs> if I have the artistic capability to do it. So we got 101 microfiber cutting after 2,000 grit sanding. I'll go speed four. Yeah, speed four. Comfortable, comfortable speed. And would I section this out, do this two sections probably? Um, yeah, whatever, whatever you're comfortable yeah. with. I just did that my way, so now we're gonna do it this way, the right way, right? So, we got some heat, right? Well, necessarily not the right way, just a different way. Yeah. Just a different way. Obviously the tape's got me missing spots, but. Now the only thing I saw in your process that I would change, instead of, you were kind of up here, mm -hmm. okay? When me and Andy polish, if we use those lights, we're back here. So we can see exactly where the scratches are, so there's no guessing game. Mm -hmm. So we position ourselves, and that's why we put lights in each of the corners. So whatever direction we are at, whether left or right, forward or back, we're able to, if we're back here, we're able to see exactly where we're at through the And then that comes, obviously, I mean, I'm like laser focused on getting my cross hatch you are. perfect. You are. And like I said yesterday, you right. become fixated on yep. that. I see that. Could potentially. I never, never thought of that before. Yeah. Yeah. Later down the road. Because if I'm back here mm -hmm. and I see something or feel something that's a little off, I could save myself catastrophe. Okay? Right. So, you know, we all preach about going slow and I understand that. But if we're going so slow and we use a compound with a heavy body solvent that creates heat, mm -hmm. okay, we lift up the pad and now we see green. Mm -hmm. So that's why I go fast or at a fast clip. I'm still working at a lot of passes and some would say that's So that's you would going work backwards. So I'd end up working more passes 
than I did. I did four, you know, two up, yeah. two down. Yeah. So I probably end up doing maybe 12 back and forth, yeah. Sure. Yeah. but quicker. Yeah. But just quicker, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like this. You're That's focusing cool. on how the product is moving with the paint, mm -hmm. as well as panel temperature. Yeah. Well, the result is pretty darn no, it's they're, great. No, they're great. They're great. Fantastic. And 101, on a scale of compounds, it is, my personal opinion, it is the King Kong of compounds. It's the, it's the, uh, the Zonda of production cars. It's, it's badass, uh, but, but it's like a 4 GT or a Viper. It'll get you. Well, it'll kill you. It'll crash you right. quick. Right. You know, it, the back end will come out, no traction control, and you're done. So the safety factor is not there. It was designed for the European hard clears mm -hmm. with foam, a rotary, and slow RPM on a rotary. And so throw in microfiber and you've got a recipe for some serious cutting, right? Some serious cutting. Right. Now, the, the serious. first thing I noticed in 101, and using it, I've used it a couple of times, but using that, or no, I used M100. M100. M100 is the, the bluer. The blues, blue. yeah. yeah. Very similar. It's, it's like big, bro this is the big but, brother. Of but M100. generally, you would use M100 on a rotary and M101 on a microfiber. That's what it... Uh, Yes. Generally. I mean, generally, I know speaking, I'm generalizing. Yeah, right. yeah, 101 was designed for rotary and foam. 100 was designed for rotary and wool, but we've adapted through it, right? the years. We've adapted and been able. To now, the first thing I noticed, if I did just that with 105, this would be flat and matted as crazy. It would be yeah. dust all over the freaking room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know my preference. I don't know. I just don't like 105 because oh, of that. There's less of a working time than say the 100 and 101. Yeah. M105 is more of a water base. All these products have certain amounts of waters and solvents yep. and other ingredients. Every compound does, just different compounds are you know, more workable with other situations. Right. Where M100 and, and 101 are more solvent based. So they're able to work longer as where 105 and 205 are more water based. That's why when they dry out, especially here in Florida, mm -hmm. oof, you got dust fest. Yeah. So it's, it's controlling the dust fest. That's why we add more product and then continually blow out. So we're always, we're always cutting mm -hmm. instead of spinning our wheels. All right, let me see if my uh, sanding marks are out. This green is a little harder to see, yeah. certainly, than black. They look good from here. Yeah. You, you can got, see them here as I'm coming. You've got some on, around the table. Right, yep. And, um, so what my, nat well, my natural thought is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to rock this up a little and scrub it out. You could scrub it out, but it would be more efficient to have the three-inch plugged in right. for airs like this. Certainly, yeah, yeah. certainly. Right, right. So when me and Andy do a car, we have our lights set up so at any angle we're able to see. Then we mm -hmm. have our blow gun right on our hip, yep. right on the ground. Then we have our uh, 21 and our three inch mm -hmm. plugged in at the same time. Yep. So it's a very efficient movement. There's no up and down. It's just, right. it's just hammer down. Just keep rolling. Done. Yeah. Now, All right. So question, when it comes to getting that out, this is another sort of different approach that Jason and I take when it comes to working on a vehicle is that we don't tape ever. Yeah. The reason is, is because if you're trying to get up close to an edge to get out these types of marks, okay, and you have tape, which has adhesive on it, no, you're adhesive picking that up yeah. into your pad, inevitably you could really do some damage. Now, we will tape on an adjacent panel. Say this is a door and there's a fender. Usually a fender is higher than the door or vice versa. Mm -hmm. You don't want to hit, clip the edge. Yeah, we of don't want to keep on clipping the edge. So in that case, yes. But well, I've never really been a fan for those 50-50s. Uh, right. Because if you polish a tape so far, you actually burn a line mm -hmm. into the clear. Right. And you can never get it out, right. no matter if you're saying it's, it's like taking a decal off yep. or a stripe. I don't know if you've ever taken that, it's, but there's a, there's a, a right. definitive line. Yeah, I get in trouble all the time. Everybody always wants me to do 50-50s. I'm like, I, I, I don't, well, no, I don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah. 
I don't want to be on a, you know, on a, on a panel that matters, yeah. you know. Yeah. This 50-50 makes sense. This 50-50 is I'll basically, I'll put a tape line over there, but I'll work it. Let's just short of it. A little close, shorter, yeah. and then yeah. I'll put an extra line of tape to basically mock the 50-50. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I understand the whole idea between the 50-50, and I think it's really cool, okay. but I know the other side of it, so I'd rather right. err on this side. All right, it. so I'm going to blow the sucker out. Yep. Now, what do you think about this? Do you use the corner door a lot for blowing out pads? I have, yeah. Or, you know, uh, you know the Prevost, like they have a, a decent... Air gun? Yeah, yeah. just the only, the only advantage of using not a Tornador, but using another is you can do the little swirly... Mm -hmm. Yeah. But whatever. Low designs. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So you're going to use more product than that. Yes. Yes. Like a lot more? A lot more. Yeah. I, I typically use more than I probably should. Yeah. That's okay. Right. And then I'm going to just go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, this is tricky because I got a contour, yeah. right? So what I would do there is either come angled, lift up just slightly on the machine yep, and by come using in. my thumb and then come in. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. And you just want to come in at an angle. Now, would you go this way on this? Nope. nope. Okay. Make sure those fibers are not rolling over the edge. I want to look for where the pad ends, right? Exactly. And remember, this pad is bridging right in here. Yeah. So you want to, you actually want to put more downward pressure right in here. At the same time, it's up. I don't know what I'm looking at, though. Blow the pad out. All right. Add a little more product. Leave the product on the. On. Add a drop or two of product on the, on the panel arm. Pad doesn't matter. And these are the things that people fixate on. That really doesn't matter. Honestly. Right. Get back here. Yeah, back uh, there. Yeah. And you're going through the bottle, looking at the track and trying to use the light as uh, the focal point. Yeah, see, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at, though. Okay. So what we're trying to see is, as this product is or, or basically going bye-bye, yep. polishing it, we're looking for any scratches through this polish. So I see some scratches here. Yep. And you're not, I would say you're not quite translucent enough to go ahead and see that, but it looks, it looks good. Like I said yesterday, if it feels comfortable, and the product is evenly dispersed across the surface. Mm -hmm. Nine times, I wouldn't say nine times ten. Seven, eight, eight times out of ten, you got everything out that you needed to get out. I want to do that real fast. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. It looks good yeah. In here. So is that a um, is that a standard uh, for you? You do you know six eight passes. More product once. I mean, I'm, I know there's not an exact rule, but is that is that normal for you? Say, okay, but once. Uh, so that's why you look through to see if you can sure. still see the scratch. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And then you'll know. Well, you could add that three times if you needed to. Yeah. And just keep yeah. keep managing heat. Mm -hmm. Keep managing heat. Right. Um, you know, and that's that's a little warm. But that's that's. I would say that's okay. That's within reason. Um, heat is a byproduct of friction, mm -hmm. so we're causing friction. Now we add more aggressive compounds with, you know, different solvents that that the byproduct is create heat. 
uh, mm -hmm. to make a product work in all these other chemicals, we're going to get some heat. Right. Some so more. again, normally I'd grab a three inch. Help control that heat. Yeah, they, you're right. The 101, man, this freaking heats up fast. It, it heats up quick. It, it, it's not. It, I could sit there with Jess car for freaking five minutes on that, and I wouldn't. But then, boom, it's it, done. It, it's it's a no frills compound. If you want to get the job done fast, and right. very efficiently, and it's a little hazy, mm -hmm. but not. It doesn't look that bad. Right. Nothing a, a quick pass with the final polish can. Right, can and that's get that's what I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna compare. All right, so here's our here's our after 2000 hit with 101. Not quite as much pop as my finished, but I mean, I have pretty much now I'm not it from from Maddie view here, this this height. I mean, it looks darn near perfect. Like over here I still have a lot of scratches and things that I think still exists that you know there's one deeper one right here but in general this looks significantly better than that does we're gonna finish this so what you're saying is this gosh darn meter is freaking worthless it's a gauge basically it's a gauge. You, you use it to to make sure that this wasn't reading like 60 and then you or, get out right or 0.6 right because I've seen that too so 102 I was measuring 110 here I have done cars where there's 25 uh, microns, and it's single stage. So one 100, 96, 102. So right in this spot, I was measuring anywhere from 102 to 110. Okay. And I'm measuring 104 over here on the left, down to say 90, there's 100. 98. Okay. So my 2000 grit followed with 100, you know, I'm removing somewhere in the order of six to eight. That's about right. Microns. That's mm -hmm. about right. For, Which isn't that much. For, for, right. for someone that has really never sanded. Right. And I, I don't, and I, again, I don't think I would sand a car that had a hundred, you know, it has started at 110, yeah. right? I, I mean, I wouldn't suggest it. It's not suggested. If it, if it was say 160, 170, then I could roll with it's it. It's a different story. Now, if I have maybe isolated scratch and I want to remove it, yeah. I would say that's okay. We're, we're not, yeah, we're jeopardizing a little bit, but again, we right. have to um, look at, okay, does this customer or do you want to go to the body shop and fix it or right. do we want to polish it and maybe save uh, you know six months a year down the road if we d get you know failure of clear which we might not right if protected so am I still seeing yes okay right in here. yeah yeah and a little bit on that corner and again yeah it's acting the tape is acting the yeah the but here is good right I mean yeah, yeah. that looks really good Looks really good. I'll, whatever is remaining is just along this tape edge. Right. Because I swear I can't see some of the things that you guys see, like when you're talking pigtails on this crown. Yeah, it freaking right. looks and, good to me. And mo most people. And I'm, remember, I'm a freaking obsessed. Mo so. mo most right. people can't see that. Right. And that's the whole thing in the detailing industry as professionals is how far do you need to go? Right. You can probably please. 80 to 90 percent of your customers, you're always going to have that one percent that's never good enough. Well, if I'm pleased, then I think we're probably covering our basis here. So, I tend to <laughs> you know, now on the yellow pad, what I'll do is I'll blow it out really good, I'll prime it a couple times, get everything saturated, not saturated, but primed, and yep. get out of because this is friction, it's dry mm -hmm. friction. So, we want to try to eliminate right. that right up. So, relatively new pad. I've only used this once. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll cycle a whole area to try to get everything worked in, and then I'll come back and I'll start working it in. Basically, we're trying to get the pad nice and happy. Right? Trying to Where, set it. Yeah. That's what usually when I'm finishing down a car, I'll start with a brand new yellow Rubis pad, and I'll split the hood in half, and I'll do the hood, and I'll feel the pad not set until after mm -hmm. I start doing the remaining 50% of the hood, probably 25% through it, 
and then when I feel, it's all with the feel on how the actual pad is moving with the actual product. Once I feel it set, I know that I will basically just double back and mm -hmm. do the remaining. Uh, all right, so we did that, right? Now what? So I put some put some stuff on it. Now what do I do? Now I actually this is this is just a weird thing I do. I actually blow that out. Again? Yep. Okay. It's just one of my OCD things. And then I'll put a little bit more on. Okay. And I'm ready to rock and roll. So you don't have to worry about you can again. It's 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 minor stuff. Now, would you finish this whole section at once? I would try to, yeah, and yeah. try to really, really hone in on my my leveling skills and really get down. And kind of All right, spread it out. Finishing, I'm not really looking at it. Am I looking no, at anything? Yeah. I mean, to, to, to visually see a huge difference between these two is hard, right? I mean, it, you're gonna basically we're... gloss it, and, right. and that's if you've done your correction correctly. That's all it, it should, should take. be. Just a quickie. Um, yeah. What's your average time clipping around? Uh, uh, for, say a Ferrari, for finishing? Yeah, for finishing, finishing. I probably average about anywhere between 30 to 50 minutes, about that. For about the whole top. car? Correct, for the finishing stage, but when it comes, unless it's finicky paint, which sometimes it takes a little longer. Right. Comparatively more. speaking to a compounding stage, that could range anywhere between two to nine hours, depending right. on how jacked up the car actually is. So here I moved, removed four, four to, you know, four or five, Microns, mm -hmm. I remove you know seven or eight mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Sanding. That's about double. That that's probably on par. I mean, yeah. you sanded it. You, you did the similar compounding steps, just right. different compound. So I would but say this, that's right on par. But this looks different than that. Okay, tell me what you're seeing. I mean, essentially the novice eye. So I'm seeing less pitting, mm -hmm. right? A little less. Um, and of course, up here I can see a little waviness from the leftover sanding. Sure. But it, it, the, there's more depth. Clarity. Yeah, depth, clarity. Is the color change? Yeah, it's darker, darker. green. It's darker, darker green here than it is okay. there. Do we know why that is? Did I remove more oxidation and stuff by, by doing that? No. What we did is we flattened out the clear. Okay, by uh, flattening out the clear, we have more as the sun beams hit mm -hmm. and refract this area that sanded smooth has more even refraction. So even though I didn't remove the peel, I've, no. I've cut the top of it You've off. Cut the top of it off, correct. So we're adding more reflectivity, which right. is changing look of the color. It's not changing the color. You're just having, you're gonna have a deeper, richer color. All right, so here's my, and this is gonna be really hard to capture on camera, but I'm telling you in person, there is a, there is a, a deeper, wetter look to it. And you can actually put water on this, mm -hmm. and the water would act as if it was freshly waxed or coated mm -hmm. because there's nothing for it to stick to. Yeah, because before, you know, this looks mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. My, you know, just good old fashioned process, this looks different, looks better. But we remove more paint. On a non-show car level, which where we put on more paint for yeah. that reason. So here's our, here's what the hood looks like before Andy's going to go at it. Here's my section over there. And so now he's going to share that process of what to do. Did this side take you? I would say 15. Okay. 
maybe 20. It's pretty good time. It's, it's hard to time things when you're on camera oh, because I'm working the camera, and, you know. Sure. At least that's my excuse. Sure, sure. Okay. So basically just doing the box out, right? Andy, before you put the posture, I'm just going to set the timer just for our own. Sure, yeah, to see what we have. All right, so what did you just put on there? I just put on Meguiar's 101 yeah. with a Meguiar's DMC 5-inch pad yep. for microfiber. And we're going to start going at it. What about my fancy um, priming business? Well, this is kind of, we used this yesterday, so there is some gotcha. technical okay. type of uh, product still left on it. But at the same time, I'm basically priming on the fly here because I don't okay. want to waste time. Okay. Okay. Now I got a good amount of scratches on that first one and there really wasn't even a lot of product on it. So right now I'm putting 101 and 205 just to, just because I'm watching how it moves on the panel. What's that wiggle crap you're doing there? Just because I'm getting close to the edge. So it's kind of like a, a little scrub. scrub technique. Yeah. Little one. Now I'm switching machines to basically knock out the portions that are a little smaller. Yeah. Now this pad is brand new. Would you do all the edges there? Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run everything. So I'm putting a lot of product on here, I do know, but it's because again, <laughs> the pad's not even primed. So why wouldn't you uh, why wouldn't you just mix up uh, a batch of 205, 101 in a bottle? Um, I guess you could. It's more controllable when it comes to the actual amounts. That so the using. 205 is just to add some lubrication because the 205 is not doing jack there when you have it with 101, is it? Uh, it's basically just leaning it out and you're utilizing the water-based property. Yeah.
I see you also managing speeds a little bit too. I am, depending on what panel, portion of the panel mm -hmm. I'm going on, I'm changing the, uh, the speed. Kind so of shifting the 205 the for this process is not for finishing. It's just to aid in what lubrication to the, the 101 and maybe dilute it a little bit. Well, 205, yeah, 205, uh, just because it's labeled a finishing polish, it does have cutting ability right. in it. Some people know that, some people don't. Now, this is pretty much ready besides, oh, let me try to dig out one other scrap. Pretty much this is ready for me to finish polish right now. I got one more. You want to come take a look at it before I finish polish? So you can see exactly what I'm looking at, comparatively speaking to yours. Now mine's finished, so I'm cheating a little bit here. Yeah, all those, all that crazy junk is gone. Right? So even though you're flying around like a madman, job done, right? Job done. Pretty much would say there's a couple of scratches left, but stuff that would need to be well, spot sanded. Yeah, right. Nothing that a normal buffer could get out. So now I'm just gonna jewel it out a little bit. the idea of using that seven inch pad on a you know, six inch backing plate. Yeah, it gives a little a little easier of use in, in my thought process. And some of the things that we're even talking about, they're unconventional, we get it. But if you try it yeah. and it works, you can't really argue that. Right. So besides a couple of scratches that would need to be spot sanded right there, and then one there, pretty good. If it looks a little deeper, it's the darkening agent in that comp, in that polish, comparatively speaking to that. In the perfect finish, probably? Correct. Something actually in the product to create this darkening effect. Yeah, I mean, that took you half the time Probably a little less than half the time. What was the time right now? 6.30. 6.30, okay. Yeah, so we're talking, talking six minutes. I stopped you a couple of times. Probably took me 15 or so to do mine. I did it in one, two, three separate sections. Or you did it in one giant, you know, one big section. Mm -hmm. A couple of less wipe offs. You saw I was trying to, and I was doing a lot of things at the same time. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So I wiped it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Yeah, so I wiped mine six times. I think I wiped a total of about three or four, maybe. Yeah. With yeah. both compounding and polishing. Right. Yeah. What happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor. floor.